As technology moves forward each year, PC hardware needs to be ready to adopt new CPUs and other components. The Gigabyte Aorus X670E master motherboard is one of the latest pieces of tech to come out of the company, and it marks a ridiculous price point for those looking to adopt a new AMD 7000 CPU. The board is pretty much future-proof at this stage thanks to its implementation of PCIe 5, Gen 5 SSD support and even some advanced power adoption features. So those looking to invest in something that you can simply expand upon in the months ahead, this board is definitely for you. For me, the Gigabyte Aorus X670E Master Motherboard marked an exciting time for PC equipment because I was on the journey to build a whole new PC build around this motherboard. Alongside another Gigabyte GPU which I've had in my cupboard for a few months now, I decided to build this new PC from the ground up and it was exciting to use the latest hardware and this beastly AMD Ryzen 7700X CPU to build it. So this review will tackle the Gigabyte Aorus X670E Master and the Ryzen 77X CPU and also touch on a little bit of the AMD Radeon RX 6750XT GPU. I will also be covering the Cooler Master Cosmos C700M case and the Master Liquid M360R in a later video where I'll go through the challenges and lessons I learned using one of the most advanced PC gaming cases you can buy on the market. But for now, this review specifically tackles the Gigabyte content. The Gigabyte Aorus X670E Master might have the price tag above 10,000 Rand, but it doesn't really look and feel that expensive. In fact, in comparison to other motherboards on the market, it is quite subtle and if anything, simple. However, that doesn't mean the X670E isn't a powerhouse because it really packs some great features. Features many of you will probably not make use of for a while. The X670E features PCIe 5.0 for SSDs and GPUs as well as more stability and power phases for those who enjoy overclocking their CPU and RAM. It also goes without saying that the motherboard supports the latest DDR5 RAM too. There are a lot of tech specs on this motherboard and you should see them scrolling on the screen now. You can see from the specs that this X670E comes equipped with everything you can expect from a modern day board in 2022. It doesn't have USB 4, but there's really nothing more you can ask for here and the inclusion of all these ports alongside the great internal I.O. makes this board as feature packed as possible. I have to acknowledge how great it was to have the best performance available for every task I had to get done. I wanted to connect my Xbox wireless controller to the PC, it had Bluetooth. The same can be said for the Wi-Fi 6E support. These little things make quite a big difference to how you approach your new PC. The X670E doesn't change the game when it comes to the design. I have used some rather extravagant motherboards in the past few months and this one is a lot calmer than any of them in the past. The only real RGB here you'll find is on the Aorus logo outside the IO port housing. See what I mean about subtle? This doubles up as a heatsink too. Gigabyte really went hard with the heatsink on this motherboard and you can see how the various pieces have been carefully slotted together to dissipate heat. The board packs some useful extended heat sinks across the top to help keep the SSD enclosures cool. These enclosures are neatly packed under a screw top surface that has to be removed in order to install the storage device. Here you'll find the Gen 5 and Gen 4 SSD ports. I don't have a Gen 5 SSD to use yet but it's nice to know that this board is ready for whenever that does happen. The board also includes PCI Express 5 for the newest GPUs. I also don't have one of those yet but also nice to have. There's also a quick release latch on the PCIe slot to quickly release your GPU. However, I did use a riser card to build this PC because I wanted to use the vertical GPU mount and I also didn't have a card that required PCIe 4 or PCIe 5. In terms of thermal housing, the X670E includes quite a number of heatsinks which aim to keep the motherboard cool during use. These heatsinks are designed to help with the overclocking experience on the Ryzen 7000 CPU. The motherboard 16x2x2 digital VRAM design will help push the overclocking further and more naturally than other boards. The Q code indicator on the board also helps show you the postcodes. So if your PC isn't booting up, you can see what code is stuck on and you can try to figure out what the issue could be. You can also clear the CMOS using the button on the back of the IO or use the Q flash to quickly install a new BIOS. I made use of these features quite a lot when I first installed the board because the BIOS had to be updated. In the box, you'll get some extra wires and connectors. Everything in the box is mostly optional if you need to use them. The Q connector makes it easy to connect your power LED and reset switch to the board for example. There's also some extension cables in the box, some SATA cables, thermistor cables, Velcro and a Wi-Fi dongle. Installing 
Building the motherboard wasn't anything difficult. The Cooler Master Cosmos C700M made this a breeze thanks to its external motherboard bracket. This meant I could install the board onto the metal surface and then slot this into the PC. The CPI I received from Gigabyte was the Ryzen 7 7700X and it was also pretty simple to install. The board comes with the latest AMD AM5 socket meaning previous Ryzen CPUs are not compatible with this board. However, all previous coolers should work fine thanks to the bracket design. The board also supports the latest DDR5 based RAM. With the latest BIOS update you can get up to 5200 MHz but by default the board supports 4400 and 4800 MHz. It can be maxed out at 128GB thanks to its 4 32GB slots. I did have some issues at first with my RAM installation but keep in mind that you might have to update your BIOS to support newer RAM slots. Even if you buy this motherboard make sure the BIOS is up to date because out of the box it might not support your DDR5 RAM. I combined the X670 70E Master with an AMD Ryzen 7700 CPU and benchmarked it for all the performance stats. I ran PC Mark 10 Performance Test Cinebench and Geekbench 5. Here are some of the scores I got. During all these tests, I monitored the performance of the CPU. I also left the boost clocks at default just to see what the raw performance would be of the CPU without the need to overclock and fiddle with settings. I then ran the test again while trying to obtain AMD's advertised 5.4 GHz boost clock. After an hour of testing frequencies over 5 GHz, the CPU maxed out at 95 degrees Celsius. I used the Cooler Master ML360R cooler attached to the CPU to run the tests. When doing single core tests, I finally managed to see the 5.4 GHz boost clock that comes enabled out of the box. I then tried to boost this even more. AMD says that even at 95 degrees Celsius, its new AM5 chipsets aren't technically running hot. These CPUs are designed to run at the highest possible clocks under 95 degrees without damage. At its peak performance, the CPU was pulling 135 watts of power. This went to 139 watts on a multi-threader test. Temperatures remained under 97 degrees and I managed to keep the boost clock at around 5.5 GHz without any manual overclocking. So let's wrap this up. The Gigabyte Aorus X670E Master Motherboard is made for the Ryzen 7 CPU and the combination of the two makes for a great performance experience. Of course the cooler case and GPU all contribute to this but I was impressed by the overall test and stability of the motherboard and the CPU. The Ryzen 7700X provides some exceptional performance, especially for gaming. It overclocks to 5.4 GHz and up without batting an eyelid and while the 95 degrees temperature does get a bit concerning, AMD says it's normal so we'll just enjoy the ride. You'll obviously be able to squeeze a lot more power out of the CPU the more you push it, but for those who just want to slap it into your PC, you'll be happy to know that it performs quite well out of the box. The Gigabyte Aorus X670E Master Motherboard is a costly piece of hardware and it would have been nice to have seen a little bit more RGB on it. I know, I usually dislike RGB, but if I'm spending over 10,000 Rand on a motherboard, it better light up my PC. In this case, it didn't. Still, the motherboard is a sleek piece of hardware and it looks great in the PC case. It is also ready for 40 series cards and Gen 5. SSDs, so I can't wait to test that out too. So that's my experience with the Gigabyte Aorus X670E Master Motherboard and the Ryzen 7700X CPU. Are you looking to pick these two components up? Let me know in the comments down below. I want to give a huge shout out to Gigabyte for sending these components my way to test out and for letting me use them as a foundation for my PC going forward. Thanks again for watching everybody and please do consider liking and subscribing. We have a load of PC component reviews coming our way in the next few weeks. Until next time, farewell.